Hello everyone, I'm Smokey, and this is a item sliding and super swimming tutorial. I'm gonna go over all the all the basics and what you need to know and how to get all the item sliding and super swimming tricks down without getting like without any problems. So I'm first gonna go over all the item sliding basics. So how item sliding works is with an ESS position. With an ESS position, uh, Link won't get enough speed to walk around, but he'll get enough speed to turn around like this, so he'll kind of jitter in place, basically, like that. That shows you that you have an ESS position. Uh, an ESS position works from... Uh, the minimum is a, a... If you're doing it to the bottom is 120. So most of the time you're not really going for a 120 ESS. Most of your time you're just going to get like a, a 100 or something like this. And anything from about 120s to like, I think, yeah, to about like 85 still works. So it's not extremely hard to hold an ESS position, but it definitely requires a bit of practice to uh, get it so fast. And you can of course just walk forward and then pause how long you like, just try to get the ESS position and then unpause and you'll do the item slide. With movement in in basically any game, there's positive speed and negative speed. So, however you're walking around forward, backwards, side to side, you always have positive speed. Even if you like walk backwards like this, you still have positive speed. However, if, you, if you're walking, then uh, with uh, with target walking forward, then turning around, you'll get a bit of negative speed. Uh, all your speed will tur be, uh, be turned into negative speed. This is because you can't, of course, make it so that Link immediately goes backwards again. The negative speed basically makes Link go in the exact opposite uh, way of it, which is walking in right now. And that's uh, basically the how item sliding works. So, if you're walking forward and then if you want to go backwards like I'm holding all the way down right now then you can see on my data viewer on the bottom left I now have 14.4 sp uh, speed uh, both potential and actual if you hold all the way down yeah you can see the, the f uh, first frame I have negative 11 potential speed so if I keep holding down that'll go down eventually and go back into positive speed and then I'll go b walking backwards. So if you do that but with an ESS, walk forward first and then hold a down ESS, you'll start building speed. So what happens here is that uh, the game developers didn't, probably just didn't test it well enough and what they did is instead of Dividing your speed by 1.2 every frame is it um, It multiplies your speed by 1.2 every single frame So basically you're building up speed exponentially um, Every single frame and you can also use the positive and negative speed to your own advantage So if you if your item sliding forward and now at negative speed if your items like normally with uh, with an ESS down or up or whatever you can also hold down or left and hold just hold the opposite direction but in an ESS and you'll start item sliding but if you hold an ESS and once you get past 45 speed negative 45 exactly you are in a in a state where you can hold the a, a or either all the way down or all the way up and you'll still start building speed you can see that if I build speed to 36 and I start holding all the way up, you can see that I'm that I'll lose all my speed again. But if I build speed to just past 45 like this, negative 52, if I start holding all the way up, I'll still build speed. It goes a lot slower as a normal good ESS, but as you can see, if I do an ESS then hold all the way up, you can see that it switches back to positive. Now that is very useful. So if you go into a corner and press target, this makes you go out of first person, but you keep all the speed that you uh, charged up. 
So if I charge into this corner for a couple of seconds, you can see that I now have 3000 speed. If I press target, you can see that I gained a little bit of speed because I paused. Uh, that'll give me one more frame of uh, speed. And then it'll shoot me into third person. Now, as you can see, if I go into a first person item, if I press target while I'm walking, you can see Link shoots a bit to the right. So that is used in an item slide. If you if you're item sliding and then you press target, that still happens, but it uses all of your speed. So instead of shooting just a little bit, you'll shoot all the way. So if I item slide against this wall and then press target, you can see that I shoot all the way to the left. But you might be thinking, well, he shot shot to the right while you were walking, but. That was because while walking you have positive speed and then I shoot to the right, but while item sliding I have negative speed, so then you'll shoot to the left. So that is also a useful thing. If you only have a wall on the right side and you need to go that way, you can item slide against the wall with, your, with the right side of the link, and then switch back to the opposite side, like this, and then you get positive speed. And because you have positive speed, you will shoot to the right. So if I now press target, you can see that I shoot to the right instead of to the left, and I'll go to this wall. So that is basically the basics about uh, target hopping. We also use this a lot for hopping to distances very far, like I will show you right here. If you line up like this, nothing to the left of you, you can see I shoot all the way over here with the windfall being all the way over there, in that in one frame. But there's also a difference. With the bow and with the grappling hook, you can see that I shoot to the right. But for some reason the developers decided that the, with the hook shot, if you then press start, you shoot to the left like that with positive speed. So, if you item slide with negative speed, with a hook shot, then you'll, with negative speed you'll shoot to the right, and with positive speed you'll shoot to the left. So that's the exact opposite of um, with the bow and the grappling hook. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why the dev developers decided to do it like this, to switch it around like that, but... Uh, also with a uh, boomerang, you get shot to the left. Now I've talked about target hopping, I also want you to talk about um, slash hopping. So what this is, is that you can see if you slash your sword like this, you, can, you gain a bit of forward speed. So you can also use that in an item slide. So if you charge speed against the wall and then press the B button to slash, you can see that I shoot all the way forward. Now that is useful in itself, but you might sometimes see that if I, I for example, I want to go directly to the wall. If I item slide against this wall and then tar or press B, I'm not going directly to the wall even though I was aiming at it. I went to this trick. So what you want to do for that is after charging up the speed you want to press B and target at the same time. If you press B and target at the same time then you'll slash uh, straight forward. But sometimes you also want a jump out of the slash. If, you, if you're holding uh, just B and target you can see that I don't get a jump out of it. But that's where, where you can also hold up on your analog stick. So if I do this and then you can home buffer, it's not needed. You can definitely do it without a home buffer, but I'm just doing this to show you guys. So if I then hold up B and target while I'm in the home screen, you can see that I also get a jump out of Alright, so now one last thing about slash hopping is sometimes there's an enemy nearby or something you can target like this. Then if you're item sliding and you target, then of course you target the enemy or for example this guy. And then you'll slash, slash towards him instead of the direction that you wanted to go in. So for that you can hold all the way up. This always works, but it's a little less um, consistent as holding target. So you should only really do this if there's an enemy or anything that they are nearby. So then, instead of pressing target, you want to hold all the way up as straight as possible. And that'll show, uh, shoot you forward as well. 
but the problem with this is that for an, a slash directly forward you would have to hold a perfect up angle which is really hard to hold um, for a like any runner it, do, it doesn't matter how good you are it's really hard to hold a up angle consistently so that's why pressing target is just the best thing to get a straightforward slash like this all right so now the last thing about i am sliding itself um, is speed locks so what you can do during an item slide is for example grab out a bomb now you might think why would you grab out a bomb during an item slide so what happens if you grab a bomb while walking is you'll grab it and keep walking without stopping your momentum so the same thing happens in an item slide if you're item sliding and grabbing a bomb you'll grab it and keep your all your momentum and because you're charging speed you'll go out of first person stop charging your speed and you'll keep all the momentum that you had all the speed that you had so now I have three and a half thousand speed and you can also do that with a skull hammer it works exactly the same as bombs um, but the benefit of this one is that you don't have to throw it away uh, unlike bombs Alright, so now that I've talked about the item sliding basics, I'm gonna start talking about the super swimming. So, super swimming can sometimes be kind of hard, because there are a lot of islands on the ocean that can sploosh you and kill all of your speed. Uh, for example, one of the islands here is Fire Mountain over here. If you come, out, come up with it with a lot of speed, you can see that I sploosh. This is because... Um, this island wants to load a lot of particles and it'll reload the whole ocean and that'll make Link fall at least one frame. If Link falls at least one frame that means he'll lose all of his speed and it'll cause him to sploosh. So all the islands that sploosh you are Dragon Roost Island, Fire Mountain, Windfall, Forsaken Fortress can sploosh you but it's a lot harder to sploosh on that, uh, unless if you go at it with a lot of speed of course. Outset can sploosh you, Forest Haven can sploosh you, and the last thing is Iron Ice Ring can sploosh you. The last thing that can sploosh you is way too much speed. If you have so much speed that you cross uh, one current in less than one frame, you'll sploosh as well. So the basic of super swimming is that you want to get some speed, it's preferred to be have a lot of around 3000 speed to 4000 speed that's about a really good speed to get around the ocean so charge your speed and depending on how you're how you're facing the wall if i'm facing the wall with my left side of me right now so i just simply press target with the uh, the bow and i'll go against the wall now going in the water can sometimes be a little tricky here in DRC it's not too hard to do because there is a really good slope into the water. On some islands the slope is either really steep or um, there is no slope at all. Which can make it a bit hard to get, in, uh, get into the water. So here is just a, a, a really uh, long slope so it just you'll just go into the water um, really easily. And as you can see here in Windfall, there's a slope as well. This one is a bit steeper as the one in DRC. So what you want to do is just charge into the corner, get a bit of speed. And you want to slowly walk into a wet like this with an ESS down. So how you actually get the speed to go into the water is just item slide. And once you have the speed, let go of your ESS. So why you want to let go of your ESS is if you keep holding ESS, then target then sometimes you'll sl shoot off into another distance instead of what you what you want to go in. So always just item slide into the wall that you want to go in and then press start with while holding neutral. So then you want to hold a ESS um, opposite to the wall like this. If I hold down ESS right now I'll just go into the wall and I'll stand still. Then you want to slowly walk into the water. Now this is a kind of a steep slope so you want to go decently slow into it if you go too fast into it you can see that 
uh, if I go with 5,000 speed, if I go into it like this, I'll just fall because I try to go into the water too quickly and I just uh, go over the slope. Now this can already be, sometimes be too, uh, too fast, but that most of the time that will still work. But and of course, if you do it like this, then that'll won't work either. Of course, like that. So you really just want to get the speed and slowly walk into it like this. Now there are also a lot of spots that you can uh, or super swim from which are extremely steep slopes. For example this one in first, uh, Forsaken Fortress. So you can see that this one is really steep and for that you want to re go really really slow. Uh, and I have 3k speed, I go into it and I just inch my screen further to the left really slow and I'll go into the water. Right here is another example of a pretty steep one. So you can see that right here is a, a bit of an awkward, awkward angle that you go in. You can either do it side sideways like this. It can be a bit hard. So this is one of those spots that you definitely want to release your ESS in. If you if I hold ESS like this, you can see that it immediately shoot off like that. So that is the reason that you always want to release ESS once you target or. Uh, yeah, target the wall. So release ESS, you'll start walking against the wall like that, then hold ESS to walk against the wall and then slowly go into the water. Especially on spots like this, uh, it is very steep and you'll, uh, as you can see right here, you can see that I'll spoosh very quickly. So you really want to go into the water very slowly, like that. So, I've been talking about holding ESS down and changing the camera during IM slide. So, what if you want to just basically just turn around all the way? So, what you want to do for that is uh, change to up on the analog stick while pause buffering, then press target and uh, then pause buffer once more, and then you'll be turned around. Then you want to just hold uh, ESS down again, and you'll be able to super swim in the different or in the opposite direction. Now, another useful thing in a in a, a super swim is that you can kill all your speed very quickly. So you can see now that I have a lot of speed. I have I have five thousand speed right now. So this is definitely way too much speed to just go onto a big island or, for example, Fire Mountain. So if I uh, want to approach Force Haven right now, which is right about right about there. If I go right now, you can see that I'll splush. I'll splush right here, and there won't be any way except for a main super swim to get back to the island. So that'll lose a lot of time in a speed run. So if you want to prevent that from happening, you can see right now that I have about 3.8 thousand speed, and that will definitely be enough to make me sploosh on Force Haven. So what you just want to do to prevent that is just switch around from up to down on the analog stick and that'll kill your speed very, very quick and that way you'll be able to swim into the quadrant of the big islands and islands like Ice Ring and Fire Mountain. So sometimes you're, uh, you want to grab a ledge like here but of course you can't grab a ledge because you're swimming backwards. So what you want to do for that is just hold target while neutral, then switch from up to down and you lose all your speed immediately and then you'll just be able to grab the ledge. Now the last thing I want to talk about is this swim, this stupid swim right here. This is Beetle Super Swim. So the reason that this swim is stupid is because basically there is a slope on this barrel and it goes deep enough to basically make you get a super swim. Uh, but the annoying thing is, is in its main position, like here, if I reload the map, you can see that it spawns right with the barrel on the corner of, uh, of the island, like this, on that corner. But this is not far away enough, because if I try to do it right here, I will always push like that. So, what you want to do for that is... You want to roll away to here and wait a little bit and then roll back so he stops. You want to line up about with the end of the barrel about at the, at this uh, at this like point of the island. So this is a good position. 
So you can do this swim two ways. You can either uh, do it like me and line it up with this, like with the part of the island like this, uh, this side of the island, to line up with uh, with this island. Um, and then put your red dot right on the middle. Then just item slide and when you think you have enough speed, look to the left and you'll get in the water. You don't want to look to the left too quick or you'll... Um, or your sploosh because it's a it's a really uh, steep slope right there. Now a different way of doing this is some way that I haven't done before, but I'm gonna try to do it to show you guys either way. So what you want to do is aim about right here, uh, so that your left is facing the wall. Then you want to charge up speed and make sure you don't fall off. And when you think you have enough, you want to press charge it. That'll lock your speed like I was talking about. And then you can just uh, slowly walk into the water on the other side, like... See if I can get this. Uh, once you think you have enough speed, usually about two seconds in, press charge it and just item slide slowly into it like this. This could be a bit more... Uh, this one might be a bit more beginner friendly. Uh, because you can slowly go into it and there's not really that much timing involved as my one. As my way of going into the water so yeah that was the in-depth uh, tutorial for super swimming and item sliding uh, i hope i explained everything well enough um, i think i went into everything that you basically need to know for uh, for wind waker item sliding and super swimming um, it is a item sliding is a really really easy trick to do it's just holding up and then switching to ess down so it's a really easy trick to do, but it's extremely hard to master. Because there's a lot of little movement that you can do with it, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of different things you can do with it. For example, the target hops, the, sli the slash hops, stuff like that. And of course, super swimming. And that all makes it uh, a pretty hard trick to master. So I hope you guys uh, find found this tutorial very useful. Uh, it took quite a bit to make it. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions that I didn't answer in this video, you can either go to the, the Wind Waker HD speedrunning Discord, or you can ask it in the comments of this video, or just uh, ask me on Discord. Just send me a DM and I'll hopefully respond real, really quick. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.